So I've noticed a lot of new players are struggling against the quest called Beyond the Blaster Scale, and have trouble taking on two Templed Basils without being one shot by their attacks. However, you shouldn't fret so much with these two, as like all monsters in game, they can be defeated solo or in group. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do that. So once you're done the line, you're going to unlock this mission. And at first, you may notice a few things. Firstly, the monster you're facing is completely new to higher rank and someone you're going to love down the line. And also, you may notice the purple border on the monster's image. This means it's tempered version of the monster, where they do increase damage to you, but their health stays the same. Now, this will be your first tempered run in higher rank, and it won't be your last once you complete it, but once you understand the main basis behind them, then you'll really need to call for help for them, since most times it's much easier to take them on solo. So firstly, before we head into the fight against the monsters, we need to prepare ourselves with the right gear and weapons. For your item pack, I would recommend you bring some healing items such as potions, mega potions, HM potions and max potions. All of these can be easily crafted by either going out in the field and collecting the parts, or harvesting them back at the harvesting plant. At the same time, you should also bring some rations or other meat in case you cart in battle, as these will allow you to get your stamina back up to max. Next, you want to bring some traps, such as trap tools, shock traps and pitfall traps. These will come in handy for stopping the monsters to allow you a bit of breathing room to catch them when they go back to their nest, or allow you to do extra bits of mild damage. It's entirely up to you how the fight will play out. Next, you want to bring some sling ammo that can help you with stopping the monsters advancing onto you, such as flash bombs and flash bugs, and also dung bombs and dung. The dung bomb will be your most reliable item in this situation, as it will allow you to push away a second basil within the same area you're in, while the flash bombs will allow you to stun the monster for a few seconds, and at this point you can either fight back or rearm yourself. And lastly, if you have the zenny, then go ahead and buy the power and defense charm to increase your attack and defense, and some bombs so you can use them to sleep bomb basil when he gets weak. Make sure afterwards you place your items into the rear dial like shown, as it can help with micromanaging your gear on the spot without having them go into your menu screen. Next up is the gear and weapon you need to fight Basil with. Basil now is weak to lightning, ice and dragon attacks, but more heavily to lightning attacks. So go with a Gidachi weapon or Kirin weapon, which will be easily found would be your best choice to go with. Ideally going with something like lances or gun lances that offer both offence and defence will allow you to take damage incredibly well if you build around them. At the same time, going with a bow gun or bow that uses lightning ammo also does incredibly well damage when aimed at their weak points. And considering you don't have to go up close to the monster, it means you can up your damage time even more, without having to dip in and out of damage. It's entirely up to you to decide on what weapon you want to go with, but going with something that the monster is weak to would be your best way of doing more damage to the monster, quickly and effectively. Your armour now should focus around defence and fire defence, so you can counter against their strong attacks and explosive damage. Ideally, if you're someone that is fine without needing that much fire defence, then you can go focus more on defence and skills. The skills you choose are up to you as it should be based on the weapon you're using. Try and get a mix of skills that will increase your damage but at the same time increase your survivability, as ideally you want to reduce the amount of time it takes for you to be carted. Attack up, weakness exploit, vitality up, steed fast, grinder and blast resistant are all decent looking skills that can help you survive the pair. Lastly we have the canteen. Now within the canteen you should aim for maxing your health and stamina out as best as possible. So going with the chef choice meal can save you time and effort without picking up food. But if you care about the bonuses you gain, then build your meal of your choice and aim for boss that can increase your damage, defense, or elemental defense. Now that we have everything prepared, we can now go ahead and do the quest. The two basils will turn out a particular pattern of sticking in either area 2, near the forest, or area 1, 4, 7, and 6. Area 4 and 7 are most likely the areas that the two tend to appear in the most, where either both of them or one of them will appear in. Now taking on the two beasts, you want to separate them so you can face one at a time rather than both. However, you can let both of them be in the same area and let them damage each other, as this gives you free damage and less chance of carting on the monster with low health. Also remember you have 50 minutes to do this in, so don't worry about rushing, just take your time. Now once the two beasts have done a significant amount of damage to each other, you can take your pick and go to town on the monster. Now a few things to note. The tempered variants do more damage than normal like I stated. So they can kill you in one hit if you get too greedy, or if you're underprepared. And the second basil can come back into the area once it's done its routine of exploring other areas. So it's wise to bring a few dung bombs with you and use them when the time comes. The basil attacks are very easy to read as they are slow but hit incredibly hard. So to counter and control the fight, you want to focus on either tripping them if you're using melee or hitting their weak points with ranged weapons. So if you're using melee weapons, your focus should be aiming at tripping the monster until it falls over, 
and then either aim at their two weak points of heads or tails. You can of course aim at their heads and tails if you're using a weapon with a big reach, but ideally tripping is more safe and less likely for you to get carted in one or two hits. Now I'll probably mention this before but when attacking them don't get too greedy of your attacks as they do tend to drop their bomb stacks when moving around a lot and this is the one major reason as to why players, especially new players, tend to get killed a lot as so they like to speed run through monsters rather than take their time. So rather than go all out on monster, just hit them a few times and back off and repeat until the opportunity is made available for you. This is how I learned how to take the two monsters on. It's not about how quick you can kill them, it's about how long you can survive. And the more you understand the situation, the better grasp you have with taking the two monsters on. And you'll feel a lot more confident with taking on some other tempered investigations later on. Now if you're using range, you don't have to worry much about trying to trip the monsters up, as you can aim directly at their weak points. Now keep up the damage while using your traps, tools and dumb bombs until the monsters start to limp. This here means that the monster is about to go back to his lair and go to sleep, so follow the monster and wait for it to go to sleep. Now in this situation you have two choices, you can either sleep bomb them and do more damage to the point of either outright killing them, but there's a chance that the sleep bomb won't be enough to kill them, so if that's the case be prepared, or you can capture them and get more rewards, or an increased amount of rewards. Whichever one you do is up to you, but do prepare yourself as one, if one of these two here don't go right, you're going to have an even more tough situation to deal with. Now rinse and repeat with the other basils and congratulations, you just completed one of the many walls that many new players have struggled against multiple times. Go pat yourself on the back, get something to eat, because you genuinely deserved it. And that is the end of the video. I do hope it helped you with this very annoying mission, as now that you have completed it, it's only going to get more worse. If you enjoyed the video, then a like and sub would be appreciated. But once again, thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon.